What's going on guys? Shada Ozugwu here coming back at you with another video and today we're doing another NFL draft do-over and that is going to be the 2011 draft class. It is an absolutely loaded and stacked class so I am super excited to do this. If you guys are new here, please hit subscribe. Just hit 50,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for that. Pushing now towards uh, 51, I guess. So, yes. Anyway, the 2011 draft class is one of the most loaded draft classes in NFL history. Some people would say it's the best draft in NFL history, which seems like a ridiculous statement for a draft that happened only a few years ago. All right, 2011 is more than a few at this point. Um, but still, it's fairly recent. Six years ago was that draft. You could coming up on seven now. And there are some future Hall of Fame players, I think, for sure, in this class, including the likes of J.J. Watt. You could talk about guys like Richard Sherman, Julio Jones. You know, time will tell on all these names. Von Miller as well. Um, too many to mention, maybe. But uh, I think without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. With the first pick, the Carolina Panthers selected it. Cam Newton and with this pick in the redraft the Panthers are going to select again Cam Newton so a lot of people will become confused and they don't really fully understand what I mean when we do a redraft so it's basically the entire first round off the board second third fourth fifth sixth seventh all off the board everyone is available to be taken uh, well, I guess they're on the board in that case. Everyone is available. So if a player goes undrafted, they are available to be taking any one of these picks. If a player is drafted later by that same team, they aren't on that team anymore. They are still eligible to be drafted. So the same team could take the same player. This shouldn't be a difficult concept for many of you to understand, but it happens. People become confused. I understand it. This is how it is. Panthers are going to keep their pick the same. I think there are so many good players on this board in this draft class that it's hard to go with Cam Newton, who I don't think is at the same caliber of player as a J.J. Watt, as a Von Miller, uh, Miller, excuse me, necessarily. But he is an MVP quarterback. He's been solid. Quarterback is such a tough position to get, just a stud in the NFL. And even though Cam, I don't think Cam Newton is at that next top tier level, He's still a very good player. He's won an MVP. He's been to the Super Bowl. Cam Newton stays the number one pick. With the second pick, the Denver Broncos would select Von Miller. And in this pick in the redraft, the Broncos are going to select again Von Miller out of Texas A&M. Cam Newton went to Auburn and also Blinn College, Junior College, I think in Texas, and also Florida. Oh, I forgot to mention that, which I'm fairly certain that I did. I wanted to name these colleges. Uh, Von Miller out of Texas A&M. Very, very solid player. Obviously, he's wreaked havoc for the Broncos on the defensive line these past couple of years uh, as like their edge rusher, their main edge rusher, one of the best in the NFL. Super Bowl MVP destroyed that Panthers offensive line. And not to say that it was anything good. He was beating, like, what, Mike Remmers off the edge? But still, Von Miller, obviously an elite-tier pass rusher, one of the best that we've seen in the NFL for a while. Really, really solid player. I don't see any way the Broncos would change this pick. With the third pick, though... The Buffalo Bills would select Marcel Darius, or Marcel Darius, however you'd like to say it, out of Alabama, defensive lineman, who they've recently traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And with this pick in the draft do-over, the Buffalo Bills select J.J. Watt. They do indeed mix it up. Arguably the best player we've seen in this draft class. You could certainly make that argument. I think he definitely is the best player in this draft class. But I just didn't see the Broncos changing their pick when they had such an elite player coming off the edge, and same thing with the Panthers with the quarterback and kind of the staple of their franchise. But J.J. Watt is as good or better than any of those guys. He's a multiple-time defensive player of the year, multiple-time or time 20-plus sack guy. J.J. Watt has been arguably the most dominant NFL player we've seen in the NFL over the last decade since he was drafted in 2011. Um, he's been absolutely unreal. So, so good. The Bills get themselves just an amazing player that can play on the interior, can play on the outside, either in a 4-3 or a 3-4. Extremely versatile. And um, this, he's so, so good. And not to say that Marcel Darius is not, but he's no J.J. Watt. With the fourth pick, the Cincinnati Bengals would select A.J. Green, a receiver out of Georgia. And A.J. Green has been one of the best receivers in the NFL 
again, since he was drafted, certainly top five. And with this pick in the redraft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Julio Jones. They do actually mix it up. I was so close to having them keep A.J. Green. I know I think Julio is better. A lot of people have Julio Jones and Antonio Brown as the top two receivers in the NFL. And then the lines have become a little bit blurred, whether it's Odell Beckham Jr., or whether it's A.J. Green, DeAndre Hopkins. Some have Keenan Allen in there. Uh, I probably would have him right up there. You know, there are a number of really good players. I think Julio is better than A.J. Green. And even though I don't want to change up too many picks when the player is as good as they are, I think in this case we're going to go Julio Jones over an A.J. Green. With the fifth pick, the Arizona Cardinals would select Patrick Peterson, a cornerback out of LSU. And Patrick Peterson has, one of, has been one of the league's best cornerbacks, again, since being drafted. Absolutely electric on returns, or at least he used to. I don't think he returned many anymore. He's done some offense. Just been a lockdown cornerback in the NFL, though. And with this pick in the redraft, the Arizona Cardinals are going to stick with Patrick Peterson, cornerback out of LSU. He's so good. And there are really, really good cornerbacks in this draft class um, that you will definitely see being drafted later. And there are some players even in this draft class um, that, you, I mean, you could certainly make an argument for being, for being drafted uh, in the first round, but maybe I don't have them. But, you know, it's kind of a slippery slope with that. But moving on. With the sixth pick, the Atlanta Falcons took Julio Jones, and the Atlanta Falcons, of course, traded that pick um, with the Browns. The Browns traded back and then traded back again, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember who with the second time, um, but they definitely did trade down again. It might have actually been the Chiefs. I think it was the Chiefs, if I recall. Um, but they did take Julio Jones, and Julio Jones is an absolute stud. Falcons would never change that, but... Here's the predicament. Here's the conundrum. Julio Jones is off the board. So with this pick in the redraft, the Atlanta Falcons select A.J. Green. Pretty much the next best thing. Um, pretty much the exact same frame as Julio Jones. Julio 6'3". I can't tell you what he weighs offhand. I know A.J. Green 6'4", though. Again, can't tell you what he weighs offhand. But very similar frame. Very similar uh, in ability. Although I think Julio Jones is just the best receiver in the NFL with Antonio Brown pretty much. And that A.J. Green shifts a little bit of a level down. Very small down, but I think the uh, Falcons get pretty much what they want here. A.J. Green is still a phenomenal player. With the seventh pick, the San Francisco 49ers would select Alden Smith, uh, edge rusher out of Mizzou. Yeah, Missouri, okay. Um, and it's been a while since we talked about Alden Smith. But basically the, the deal with him is he was as good as as any player we'd seen. Pretty much, I think, the general consensus was based on his first couple of seasons. This is far and away the best player in this draft class. Alden Smith wreaked havoc on the defensive line. Well, I guess he was more of a stand-up guy, pass rusher for the 49ers with Justin Smith basically taking up blocks and Alden Smith having one-on-ones on the outside. And he was so, so good. But here lies the problem with Alden Smith. Um, and excuse my French, but he's a fucking idiot. That's the problem. Kept getting suspended for a bunch of things. And really, the main issue you see with Alden Smith um, is just a sheer lack of any knowledge in any capacity. This is the same guy that walked into LAX, Los Angeles International Airport, says, I have a bomb. Are you out of your mind, Alden? Are you smoking? Well, we do. We, he is smoking something, as he's been suspended multiple times for that um, and arrested as well. So, I mean, you gotta be on some other type of shit to be that fucking retarded. Alright, okay, 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 that's a little bit real. No, he's not retarded. <laughs> what is he, Down Syndrome? I don't know. <laughs> that's again, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Just kidding. But yeah, Alden Smith, even as good of a player that he was, career thrown down the toilet. And um, with this pick in the redraft, as I still continue to shit on Alden Smith, whose career is down the toilet, Pun very much intended. With this pick in the draft do over, the San Francisco 49ers select Justin Houston. Pretty much the next best thing, right? Justin Houston's a phenomenal edge rusher. Really, really good player. Of course, was drafted later by the Chiefs. And apart from injury, Justin Houston's been incredible in the NFL every healthy season he's played. So there you go. He doesn't have off the field concerns. Just a great stand up guy. Tremendous edge rusher as well. 49ers get themselves a stud. With the 8th pick in the draft, the Tennessee Titans would select Jake Locker, quarterback out of Washington. 
And, uh, I mean, you guys don't need me to tell you that Jake Locker is an absolute bust. So bad. And uh, even though the Titans do have a glaring need at the quarterback position, with this pick in the redraft, we're going to go ahead and have the Titans select Richard Sherman, cornerback out of Stanford. Great player. Uh, another one of those players that you're like, this is definitely one of the top five players in this draft class. You know, regardless of draft position in this redraft, Richard Sherman was as good as a cornerback as we'd seen in the NFL since he was drafted. Was so good for the Seahawks in terms of just um, tremendous zone coverage and being a real ball hawk, getting interceptions and really locking down that side of the field. Tremendous corner. Titans didn't exactly have a glaring hole at the cornerback position, but they could definitely use an upgrade. And keep in mind, uh, for this redraft, we're taking things that we know about these players and how they're going to develop and what the team needs were at the time. That's a huge factor. Um, if I forgot to mention that, I think I did forget to mention that in the beginning. So, yes, Richard Sherman to the Titans with the eighth pick. With the ninth pick, the Dallas Cowboys would select Tyron Smith, an offensive lineman out of USC. And with this pick in the draft duo over the Dallas Cowboys, will select Tyron Smith, an offensive tackle out of USC. Tyron Smith, again, you keep talking about the best players at their position and the best players in the NFL. And Tyron Smith has been exactly that at left tackle for the Cowboys. Top five left tackle in the NFL for sure. His play has diminished over the past one or two years because of injury. He's still a fantastic player. And I think along with Joe Thomas, it's been like 1A and 1B in terms of best tackle in the NFL over the past couple years. Really like Tyron Smith, even though I'm a Giants fan and he plays for the Cowboys. Really, really good player. And uh, you got to respect it on the field. He's just tremendous. Rounding out the top 10. We have the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting the Blaine Plane. Blaine Gabbert, quarterback out of Mizzou. Blaine Gabbert um, hasn't exactly been an elite level quarterback. Hasn't exactly been a top 10 pick type of a player, right? So with this pick in the redraft, we're going to have the Jacksonville Jaguars select Tyrod Taylor, quarterback out of Virginia Tech. That took me a minute there. I totally forgot where he went. I, Virgi I'm pretty sure it's Virginia Tech. Anyway, really, really poor player for the Ravens as a backup. But then he really took his career to the next level as soon as he became the starting quarterback in Buffalo. Whether the Bills organization wants to admit it or not, Tyrod Taylor is a franchise-level quarterback. Really, really talented player. Uh, has the arm talent. Has the accuracy. Tyrod Taylor, I think, doesn't have the reps yet required. He doesn't have the number of uh, t attempts. But I think if you don't factor in number of attempts, uh, which he's very close to being at the threshold required to be ranked all time, I think he has a top 15 passer rating all time at like 92.4, something like that. And I know passer rating is not everything, but it's certainly a factor. Tyron Taylor is a really talented quarterback. Jags get themselves a developmental player who could eventually become what he is now. And I think that's uh, more than a good bargain at the number 10 pick. With the 11th pick, the Houston Texans would select J.J. Watt, defensive end out of Wisconsin. I think he's the best player in this draft class, but he went way earlier at pick number three to the Buffalo Bills. No longer on the board, so with this pick, the Houston Texans will end up taking Cameron Jordan. Similar player in ability to J.J. Watt. Similar player. Just not quite at that same level. I don't think he'll ever be a defensive player of the year. Um, multiple time defensive player of the year. I think he could maybe eventually win one. I'm not going to count him out. He's a very good player. Um, but he's just not to the level of J.J. Watt. But they play some very, very similar positions. Um, you could say the same. They're both defensive ends. Uh, but I think their roles kind of can be different. But they both can play inside. Both can play outside. Texans get themselves a versatile player in Cameron Jordan. Very, very talented guy. At number 12, the Minnesota Vikings would select Christian Ponder, a quarterback out of Florida State. Christian Ponder has not been good. The Vikings would later draft a quarterback in, I think, 2014 um, in Teddy Bridgewater. So clearly, if you draft a quarterback in the first round multiple times in two years, the previous one couldn't have been all that good, and Christian Ponder was not. So with this pick in the redraft, Instead of Christian Ponder, the Minnesota Vikings select Chris Harris Jr., cornerback out of Kansas, would go undrafted. That's crazy. And if you think about it with Chris Harris Jr. out of Kansas, there have been two Kansas cornerbacks 
really two good players out of Kansas. Really, <laughs> you could say ever. Um, really good. And that's Chris Harris and Yaquid Tlaib, both cornerbacks, of course, both out, of, both out of Kansas, and both play on the Denver Broncos in the no-fly zone. What are the odds? Anyway, regardless of that, um, Chris Harris Jr. is one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL, one of the most underrated players in the NFL. So, so good, so talented. And, um, yeah, Vikings get themselves a really, really good cornerback here uh, with the 12th pick. With the 13th pick... The Detroit Lions would select Nick Fairley, a defensive tackle out of Auburn. And uh, Nick Fairley's been a decent player, but I don't think top 15, um, you know, maybe not even a first rounder in terms of what his abilities ended up translating into. So with this pick, instead of Nick Fairley, the Detroit Lions will go Muhammad Wilkerson, defensive lineman out of Temple. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure. Um, I should have looked into this, but I'm pretty much just going off memory with some of these schools for the redrafted players. So excuse me for that. I'm like 100% sure it's Temple though. So Muhammad Wilkerson has been really, really solid for the Jets. Multiple time pro bowler, if I recall. Really, really, really solid player on the defensive line. And uh, yeah, Detroit Lions get themselves a really versatile stud that can play 3-4 defensive end or 4-3 defensive tackle. With the 14th pick, the St. Louis Rams would go Robert Quinn, a defensive end at a UNC. And Robert Quinn has been a really solid player for the Rams. He had a huge sack season uh, early on in his career and has been pretty solid since then. But with this pick in the 2011 NFL Draft do-over, the, I guess, St. Louis Rams at that point would select Ryan Kerrigan, outside linebacker out of, I cannot remember, Purdue. All right, I just I just looked at it. It's Purdue because uh, he also went in the first round a few picks later to the Washington Redskins. Really, really solid player. This is one of those picks where I probably should not have changed it. Probably still should have kept Robert Quinn. Went for a little bit of a shakeup because I do think Ryan Kerrigan's a better player overall. So Ryan Kerrigan, they basically played the same position. Both 3-4 outside linebackers for a while that pretty much now are 4-3 defensive ends. I actually, wait, are the Redskins a 3-4 or 4-3 still? I don't remember. Uh, either way, they're both edge rushers. Ryan Kerrigan's a very good player. I think just a little bit better than Ryan, or excuse me, than Robert Quinn. With the 15th pick, the Miami Dolphins would go Mike Pouncey, a center, or I guess guard at the time, or was he a center at the time? Was Marquise a guard? They played next to each other at Florida. Anyway, um, out of Florida. And with this pick in the draft do-over, they will select Jason Kelsey, center. So they're getting a center um, like Mike Pouncey, but I think one that's playing at a higher level now, at least Jason Kelsey's been a tremendous player for a while. But I think now he's pretty much solidified himself as the best center in the NFL. Travis Frederick's right up there with him, but I think Jason Kelsey's just right now a little bit better. Insane run blocker. Uh, so, so good in that department. So Jason Kelsey is the pick here in this redraft. With the 16th pick, the Washington Redskins would go Ryan Kerrigan, an edge rusher out of Purdue, and he's no longer on the board, as it was taken a little bit earlier by the St. Louis Rams. So with this pick in the redraft, we have the Washington Redskins going Robert Quinn. Nice little flip-flop. I think many of you probably saw that coming, but there you go. Robert Quinn switches with Ryan Kerrigan at picks number 14 and 16. At number 17, the Patriots would go Nate Solder, an offensive tackle out of Colorado. And Nate Solder's been a very, very solid offensive tackle uh, for the Patriots. Never made a Pro Bowl, though, so we're going to insert a different player, and that is going to be Rodney Hudson. Could play guard, could play center. Rodney Hudson's a very, very good player, captain of the Raiders at the time right now. So he's a really good player, really solid and um, he's going to help out that Patriots offensive line just a little bit better in overall value than Nate Solder. At pick number 18, the then San Diego Chargers would go Corey Legit, a defensive tackle out of Illinois. And um, Legit's a really good player. He is. He's solid, very underrated. But with this pick of the redraft, it's going to have to be Marcel Darius, a defensive tackle out of Alabama. I had Corey Legit here up until like right now, and I'm like, I don't think I have Marcel Darius going anywhere in this, uh, so just decided to flip-flop it right now. And um, I think Marcel Darius, Pro Bowl defensive tackle, has been super solid. And now for the Jags again, he's really, really good. 
So it's a no-brainer pretty much at this point. At number 19, my favorite team, the New York Giants, would go Prince of Mucamara, a cornerback out of Nebraska. And he's always been a pretty good overall player. I wouldn't go higher than pretty good with the Jags, with the Bears, with the Giants. He's fought through injuries his whole career. And uh, I think the Giants probably regret taking him as he's, you know, so many other good players in this draft class that they could have had and probably would have rather had as he's never even made a Pro Bowl. Certainly not with the Giants as he's never made one. I just said that. So with this pick instead, the Giants are going to go K.J. Wright. And I know a very interesting pick here, but the Giants have never really taken any linebackers with top picks. Uh, the, the last good linebacker the Giants have even had was Antonio Pierce, and they signed him. And the last one they drafted was maybe, I don't know, Pepper Johnson? <laughs> Is that the last good one they drafted? I, can't, I don't even know. And that was in the 90s or the 80s. And so that was uh, quite a long time ago. Jerry Reese, since he became general manager in like 08, and he was like something else in 04, he came in. Never really liked to take linebackers that high. So I think this is a more than fair pick. Works out. I would love the Giants to have an actually competent linebacker at the position. K.J. Wright would be exactly that. With the 20th pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would select Adrian Claiborne, defensive end out of Iowa. And, uh, all right. Apart from Adrian Claiborne's ridiculous six-sack game this year, he's been a shitty player all time. He really has never been good. Um, and he hasn't even played well this season. Just that one game where he's going up against the back the backup offensive uh, tackle, the backup left tackle for the Cowboys, who I can't even remember his name at this point. Uh, I'll look it up after. You guys don't need to really tell me in the comments unless you'd like to, but I already know it. And I, I just, I don't know why I can't remember it, but I cannot. Anyway, uh, I just thought it would come to me just there. Adrian Claiborne is not really a good player. Certainly was not for the Buccaneers. So with this pick, instead, the Tampa Bay Bucks will select Pernell McPhee, I also think he went to Illinois. I'm not positive on that. I'm going to definitely look into that after this. But uh, yeah, Pernell McPhee, really solid player, really solid edge rusher. Another player that's super underrated. I think he's better than Adrian Claiborne by a country mile. So he is the pick here at number uh, 20. All right, Pernell McPhee went to Mississippi State. What am I, stupid? I don't know. Um... With the 21st pick, though, the Browns, after trading down with the Falcons, after trading down with the Chiefs, would select Phil Taylor, a defensive lineman, basically a nose tackle out of Baylor. Never really evolved into a great player. They certainly regret taking him in the first round as he's part of the reason. I guess, like, like not a major one, but he's part of the reason the Browns still suck is they haven't capitalized on many of their first-round picks over the last ever so with this pick instead of phil taylor i have the cleveland browns selecting Corey legion defensive lineman out of we already saw him uh out of illinois and um yeah Corey legion's a solid player just um i don't know a little bit better i think we can all agree than phil taylor even though he isn't exactly a nose tackle solid player underrated browns get themselves a pretty good player with this pick with the 22nd pick the Indianapolis Colts would go Anthony Costanzo, an offensive tackle out of BC. And instead of Anthony Costanzo, we're going to jump right into it. They are going to be taking Jarrell Casey. Yes, I can't believe Jarrell Casey fell all the way to 22 with the Colts. But the only reason he didn't go earlier is scheme fit. That's the only thing I can say. I think that Corey Legit is more of a defensive tackle. And I think... Jarrell Casey is more of a 3-4 defensive end. I know that's kind of a weird thing to say because they're very similar positions, but it's the same reason I didn't have Jarrell Casey going over Marcel Darius, even though I think Jarrell Casey is a better player. Same thing with Corey Legit, and I know Corey Legit has played a lot of 3-4 defensive end um, with the Chargers before they essentially moved to a 4-3, but all about scheme fit. I think Jarrell Casey fits the Colts better than he would have some of these other teams, even though I'm sure he could play 4-3 or even 3-4 defensive tackle. Really, really solid player. Love watching Jarrell Casey. Another super, super underrated player. Colts gets an, they get an absolute steal here at number 22. At number 23, the Philadelphia Eagles would go Danny Watkins, a guard out of Baylor. 
That's a big swing and a miss for Philly. Danny Watkins, not solid, not great, <laughs> not really that good of a player. And um, they do still need help on the offensive line, or at least they did at the time with Danny Watkins. But with this pick in the draft do over, we're going to have them say, uh, take Mike Pouncey, guard slash center out of Florida. I think he can play both. Pro Bowl center, really solid player, and um, clearly much better than Danny Watkins. With the 24th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints would select Cameron Jordan, a defensive end out of Cal. Cam Jordan's no longer on the board. Sorry, he's not. Really, really talented player. You can't take him. He was already drafted. I was trying to think of where he went earlier, and I don't remember where I had him. I think I had him near the top, near the top 10. Houston Texans, maybe? Uh, that sounds about right. But with this pick in the draft do-over, I have the, excuse me, the New Orleans Saints selecting Randall Cobb. Yes, Randall Cobb, wide receiver, really, really talented. And is that partially because of Aaron Rodgers? Sure. Aaron Rodgers is arguably the most talented quarterback in NFL history, even if he doesn't have the accolades as far as, you know, arm strength and accuracy and mobile ability and everything. Aaron Rodgers, he checks all the boxes. And that uh, makes Randall Cobb look maybe better than he is, but Randall Cobb's a great player. And uh, I think with a, a quarterback like Drew Brees, Randall Cobb would continue to excel and have a really, really good career down there in New Orleans. With the 25th pick, the Seattle, uh, Seattle Seahawks would go James Carpenter, an offensive tackle out of Alabama. He would later be moved to guard. And he's actually been a solid guard for the Jets, as well as the Seahawks. But with this pick, instead of James Carpenter, the New Orleans Saints, it should be the uh, Seattle Seahawks. I can't even speak English. And I'm not going to cut it out because, I mean, you guys, I'm flawed. You, you see it. Seattle Seahawks go Doug Baldwin. A wide receiver that ended up going undrafted. Doug Baldwin, super, super solid player. Undrafted out of Stanford. And, um, yeah, Seahawks obviously can't sign him as an undrafted free agent. They don't have the same luxury. They have to draft him if they want him. And they, of course, do. Really, really good player. And he's basically their offense with Russell Wilson. They have nothing else going on. With the 26th pick, the Kansas City Chiefs would select John Baldwin, receiver out of Pitt. Terrible. Bust. Not going to talk about him. Instead of John Baldwin, the Kansas City Chiefs will select receiver Torrey Smith. He's been solid for the Ravens, been solid for the 49ers, been solid for the Eagles recently. And I use an Eagles picture because uh, it's a little bit more relevant, a little more topical. But yeah, Torrey Smith, super, super solid receiver. That's exactly what the Chiefs need, and especially they, they needed it as they took a receiver in the first round. Torrey Smith, arguably the best receiver available. I think he certainly is after, you know, Doug Baldwin went off the board and after Randall Cobb went off the board. Chiefs get themselves a really solid player in Torrey Smith. With the 27th pick, of the 2011 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens selected Jimmy Smith, a cornerback out of Colorado. And with this pick in the draft duo over the Baltimore Ravens, do the exact same thing and take Jimmy Smith, a cornerback out of Colorado. He's a super, super underrated player. Such a good cornerback in the NFL. It's almost a travesty that he's fallen all the way back down to 27, but he did. And again, the Ravens capitalized on it and take a player that would take a little while to develop, but once he did, has become one of the NFL's top cornerbacks. With the 28th pick, the New Orleans Saints picking again, would select Mark Ingram, running back out of Alabama. And even though he took a while to come onto the scene, Mark Ingram last year and this year, making the Pro Bowl has really become that player that the Saints want him to be. Heisman winner out of Alabama. With this pick in the redraft, the Saints take the exact same player in Mark Ingram, running back out of Alabama. It could have easily been another running back, but I think recently Mark Ingram showed that uh, he's worthy of this pick, keeping it the same. With the 29th pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears would select Gabe Karimi, offensive tackle out of Wisconsin. And with this pick in the redraft, the Chicago Bears select Nate Solder, offensive tackle out of, oh, I've totally forgotten what it was. Somewhere out west, where, I'm sorry, this is very bad of me, out of Colorado, there we go, 
Uh, <laughs> a lot of Colorado players in this first round with uh, he and Jimmy Smith, and I guess that's it. But yeah, Nate Solder, really, really solid offensive tackle. He does fall a little bit further than he did originally. Still a really talented player. Deserves to go in the first round. They're snagging him here over Gabe Karimi. With the 30th pick, the New York Jets would go Mo Wilkerson, defensive end out of Temple. And uh, not on the board any longer. He went actually pretty high up there. Could have had Jarrell Casey go to the Lions also instead of Muhammad Wilkerson. But, you know, I do the redraft how I do the redraft. You guys feel free to disagree. It happens. Um, all spur of the moment kind of thing. But with this pick in the draft, the New York Jets select DeMarco Murray, running back out of Arkansas. No, out of Oklahoma, definitely. Definitely Oklahoma. Arkansas with Darren McFadden and Felix Jones. Definitely Oklahoma. I'm positive it's Oklahoma. Uh, stop second-guessing myself. Whatever. DeMarco Murray, really, really good player. Was super good. I keep saying super. Like, Jesus. Super good player. The Cowboys led the league in rushing, and that has been solid for the Titans before he's pretty much finally uh, turning over the reins to Derrick Henry, it seems, especially well, next year. Good player. Uh, I'm sure the Jets would like a solid running back that they could have had because Sean Green was not getting it done. Two picks left, and with this 31st pick in the draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers, we go Cam Hayward, defensive end out of Ohio State. And with this pick in the redraft, they go Marcus Gilbert. An offensive tackle. All right, I know Cam Hayward is such a good player. Very, very underrated. I think Marcus Gilbert has a little bit more value. They needed help on the offensive line at the time. They get Marcus Gilbert later, but I don't think he's going to last very much longer, especially with the high value associated with tackles in the NFL. Marcus Gilbert, one of the top right tackles in the NFL. Very, very good. Even though Cam Hayward is such a talented player, if the Steelers want Marcus Gilbert, they need to take him right now, and they do. And with the final pick in the 2011 NFL Draft and Draft Do-Over, the Green Bay Packers selected Derek Sherrod, an offensive tackle out of Mississippi State. And with this pick in the Draft Do-Over, they select Kyle Rudolph, a tight end out of Notre Dame. Solid tight end, Pro Bowl tight end, coming back onto the scene with the quarterback this year. He's been very good. Uh, I'm not even sure if he made the Pro Bowl this year, but he certainly could have. I think he might have. Anyway, solid tight end. There are so many players in this draft class that just, just barely missed out on the first round, but you can't take everybody in the first round. You got guys like Cam Hayward, like Jabal Sherd. I mean, like Titus Young, even. No, I'm kidding. Um, but like, uh, let's see, Orlando Franklin could have been, he was really solid for a while. Stefan Wisniewski was solid. I mean, there are such good players in this draft class, but you can't take them all in the first round. There were guys that were just such near misses that just missed out on the first round. Um, but yeah, we're ending it with Kyle Rudolph. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I was a little stammery in this video. I'm not sure why. Uh, I guess I don't really know the English language all that well, but uh, hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. I think you did. It was really fun for me to do. I love doing these draft do-overs. If you guys have any other ideas, let me know down in the comment section below. Last couple of videos should be popping up on the screen. Maybe one will be a draft do-over. It's recommended for you. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. The shit don't run away.